All right, how's it going everyone? It has been a while, there's been a lot going on and uh, we have something new to show you here today. So here she is, Peter's new Remora 490 center console. We're gonna show you guys everything on this boat, okay? There will be, just as per the other uh, boats we've had, there's been a string of videos. So this is Peter's new boat, it's here to stay. Um, we'll be doing a series of videos on this boat doing all sorts of things. So we'll be doing estuary fishing, casting soft plastics, um, jigging out at the fad, jigging at Montague. Uh, we might even get it out wide offshore on a calm day. Um, Peter will be fitting uh, electric motor on the front here. What are you doing to the front here, Peter? Um, that's the, uh, it's getting the Garmin Traken, uh, Kraken. Um, so that's a, uh, with a 36 volt battery set up, um, and that gives you about 100 pounds of thrust. Um, apparently, uh, the uh, Garmin um, Spot Lock is one of the best. And one of the features of the Kraken is that um, she'll actually engage reverse thrust to help keep you on position. Yes, so we're looking forward to that, you know. So what this, what this is kind of about is that, yes, I've still got my boat and we'll talk about that and that's ongoing and plenty of work's going on in that. But, you know, my boat is all about those big offshore days. But what this is about is when we just want to fish in the estuary, we just want to throw some lures around. We want to have a jig for a kingfish this is just going to be a whole lot more practical um, than my boat and also this is something that peter can launch and retrieve um, by himself but anyway let's have a look um, over the boat general sort of thought on the finish gel coat looks nice nice and shiny looks really good quality i've looked over the boat um, extensively i haven't found yet anything that i think is you know dodgy workmanship or anything like that not that you'd obviously expect that but anyway just making a point that everything uh looks really good fit out of this boat was done at bateman's bay power and sail and they've always done uh good work Some pop out cleats that's pretty cool and as peter mentioned the 100 horsepower uh suzuki on the 1.5 block lightweight engine incredibly good on fuel um, but we'll look, we'll do all those sort of tests as we've done previously with the other boats. We'll do fuel economy under different conditions. We'll do acceleration. We'll do all sorts of stuff. Now you've got to watch your line. You need it to sink to the bottom every single time. Okay. See how the line just went below the surface there? Yep. So that's how you know it's sunk. Then before you do anything, wind up the slack. Yeah. And then a few jigs like that. Okay. Yeah. Wind up the slack again. Watch your line. You know it sinks. See how it just dropped there? Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. All right, here we are. And what have we got here? Oh, we have the first fish of the boat christened on the first out oh no you are gotta be kidding me we lost the first fish oh peter had his i'm gonna blame peter for that straight up on camera peter had his, peter i'm gonna blame peter for that i got it in a couple of minutes earlier i'm the i'm the net man but peter had his clearly had his drag done up too tight there we almost had the first fish of the boat Oh well, we'll keep trying, we'll keep trying. That one was exactly as you said. Alright, here we are, we're out on the water in uh, Peter's rig and I just want to show you guys the layout and the room and all that sort of stuff and, uh, you know, just some early observations. So, as you can see around the front here, you've got a big, um, deep, large area where Peter's got an ice box there and then you can obviously walk um, all the way down the sides. Now, you can get these boats optioned with a casting platform here, and Peter has decided purposely not to do that. Um, and the reasons for that, that are as follows. So obviously you've got plenty of room and you've got enough height here to cast anyway in estuary situations. But when we're out uh, offshore or we're on the fad, casting platform can actually be quite dangerous so 
what we thought is we really still want some depth up the front here so we can be bracing ourselves against the side and we can be jigging casting lures and things all the way around uh, the front of the boat so you know a lot of people may go for casting decks but because we're planning to do some you know pretty serious um, inshore reef fishing even some light offshore fishing actually genuinely do it in this boat uh, we didn't think we would want a casting deck all right we'll just go front to back so up the front here you can see a nice uh, hatch in there or open area I should say for uh, the anchor and some gear I think a nice touch would have probably been some sort of hatch lid there which obviously Peter could add um, at some point if he wanted to uh, we've got a nice uh, custom stainless um, is this custom Peter this come with the boat it comes with the boat but um, yeah so right it's custom made but obviously fitted up by remora um, directly one thing I love uh, about this by the way I'm really a fan of this molded um, top section and the height it adds to the boat and also the seated area you basically have all the way around the boat so you can sit all the way down these sides and if you really wanted to you could put some of that sort of grip stuff uh, on top here you know that rubber grippy stuff if you really really wanted to but you know um, but look another handle like that one down there probably wouldn't hurt up the front here Peter will get to that soon but look just just in general I would say there's a lot of room to walk around in this boat okay it's a it's a 4.9 meter boat which is really a 4.45 meter hull with this pod on the back but as you can see putting this pod out the back here really does give you a lot of space around the entire boat it's so nice to be able to walk uninhibited around this entire boat it makes it really fishable for you know two or three people four at a squeeze if you really had to and um, everyone would have a spot to fish and you wouldn't have uh, too much troubles but anyway let's let's keep looking all right we've got a nice um, stainless steel grab rail around here that's very sturdy uh, quality nice little uh, nice little windscreen there um, and plenty of room uh, for various electronics and things you've got a nice little steering wheel here with a knob I'm always a fan of steering wheels with a knob um, we've got a pretty big hatch in here by the looks of it so there's actually a lot of room inside the console and let's have a look at this wiring job who did all the wiring Peter uh, it's all power and sail it's okay pretty tidy power and sail yeah they've done a nice job there um, I haven't haven't seen them do anything bad just yet but also that um, storage container there that so that will end up holding all the additional batteries for the bow yeah, mount that'll hold the 36 volt battery so he's gone he's going 36 um volt to run a, a kraken on the front here which is going to be 100 pounds of thrust is that right so yeah um the thought behind that is we really want the grunt from the electric to be able to spot lock us out if we're above the school of kings or on the fat or something like that but um so really excited about that but look general general thoughts of the boat so far uh, looks very well put together it pretty much has everything that we need to do some serious uh, inshore fishing and some light offshore fishing and look um, we have water tested this okay through chop slop wind all that sort of stuff and I'd rather not talk about that uh, just yet because I'd rather show you guys and talk through it in detail so we'll look at um, how it handles through the chop swell what's the stability like um, how dry is it how much water does it throw up um, obviously as I mentioned earlier this is a boat that has quite a substantial dead rise for a small boat so 21 degrees I think which is kind of you know copying that famous Haynes Hunter uh, dead rise which it is loosely based off and so having such a dead rise in a small boat a lot of you would be wondering you know how does that work is that a good thing how's that going to impact stability and look it's something that Peter and I were concerned about uh, as well um, but obviously we water tested it and we'll go through all that sort of stuff in detail but yes this is quite an interesting little boat and um, you know to summarize if we didn't think it wasn't you know if we didn't think it was good it wouldn't be here Peter wouldn't own it and um, we wouldn't be talking about it but uh, 
yeah, very excited for Peter. So, um, Peter's also owned boats for a very, very long time. You will have seen him on the channel. He's always out and about with me. I could probably count the times on my hand in the last several years that I've been out without Peter. So he's always there and I'm very excited for Peter to get, you know, a sweet boat of his own. And it also takes the pressure off me a little bit with my boat and I can take my time on um, some things and that. But anyway, cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Stick around. Um, there will be a full... Oh, the wind's blowing up. There will be a full series of all sorts of adventures and reviews uh, on this boat and um, we look forward to you guys being part of that. All right. See you soon.